This one is about how we measure distances in astronomy. Clearly this is going to be very important because we can't really tell much about things unless we know how far away they are. Uh, historically people thought that all the stars in the sky were all the same distance from the Earth. And they just looked different brightnesses because they were different brightnesses. Now we know of course that it's true that they are different brightnesses but some of the ones that are closer look brighter because they're closer and some that are much further away are really much brighter but they're just much further away. So we need to understand how we came to an idea of actually knowing how far away stars are. We're going to do this by just starting off with some basic units so that we know the units that we're talking about when we're measuring these distances. And then we're going to crucially look at the different methods of measuring distances in space and their limitations. And hopefully this is going to get us to a good idea of this concept called the cosmic distance ladder. Okay, it's called the ladder because we've got steps. Okay, so we've got kind of three steps to look at of how we measure increasing distances in space. Okay, so first of all, some units. Uh, so the simplest unit is the astronomical unit, um, AU. And this is simply the mean radius of the Earth's orbit. We know that to be about 150 million kilometers or in meters, 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. Second unit that you'll probably have come across is the light year. And a light year is simply the, the distance that light travels in a year. So to work that out, all you've got to do is the speed of light, multiply it by 60, by 60, by 24, by 365, and you'll end up with a distance in meters. And then the really important one and the trickiest one to understand is the parsec. Okay, this is how a star appears to move in the sky as the Earth goes round its orbit. So what you have to imagine is some stars a long, long way away in the background. Okay, these are many, many megaparsecs away. A star that's relatively close to us, the scale on this is completely wrong, but that's true of pretty much any diagram you draw in astronomy. The scale is never going to be correct because everything just disappears to be tiny, small angles. Okay, so imagine the star here, the Earth, you look at it from here and it looks as if it's in front of those stars. You wait six months till the Earth goes round here and you look at it again and now it appears to be in these in front of these stars. Okay, that's the concept of parallax. Okay, and the definition is that this distance here is one parsec if this angle is one second of arc. For those of you that have not come across seconds of arc before, let me just explain. A degree is the unit we're used to. A minute of arc is a 60th of a degree. And a second is a 60th of a minute. So that leaves us with 1 over 60 squared, which is 1 3,600th of a degree. So we get this triangle, one astronomical unit across the bottom. Okay, so here's the... Sun is the Earth at one point in its orbit. Okay, if this angle is 1 3600 degree, then this length here is 1 parsec. Notice, although you might argue about whether we're doing the hypotenuse of this triangle or this side of the triangle, in reality this angle is so small that those two lengths are almost exactly the same. Okay, we can do some conversions. So an astronomical unit, we already did meters, so a kilometer, sorry, so we just turn it into meters. A light year, we do 3 times 10 to the 8 times 3,600 times 24 times 365 because it's this number. And if we just do a little bit of trigonometry on that triangle we just had, we end up with the distance of a parsec being this far. Okay, a little conversion factor between these two that we'll need quite a lot. Okay, is a parsec is 3.26 light years. Now, obviously, that's quite a long way. You wouldn't want to walk it. But having said that, there are no stars closer than that to the sun. The nearest star is about four and a quarter light years away from the sun. So it's more than one parsec away. OK, so that's parallax. OK, one three thousand six hundred degree. You look in December, you look in June. You notice at a first glance those two pictures look the same, 
but at second glance you'll notice the star has just moved very slightly to the right okay and we have to judge how big the angle is as we look from the earth okay the Hipparchus satellite has used parallax to measure distances up to 500 parsecs fairly recently but that's still well inside the Milky Way okay so this is our first step in our distance ladder okay it's important to realize that as you get further away the parallax gets smaller and smaller and smaller okay so the relationship between the distance in parsecs okay is one over the parallax angle in arc seconds so this will always be less if you're looking at a star less than one second of arc okay but if it was say half a second of arc it would be two parsecs away if it was a tenth of a second of arc it'd be ten parsecs away and so on okay so here's a little image of a spiral galaxy let's imagine this is the milky way here's our little bit with the sun somewhere in the middle of here okay and we can find the distance to some stars at this kind of approximate scale okay which is brilliant for finding out about a few stars but it's not telling us much about the universe so where do we go next okay well we need to get this crucial idea okay and the crucial idea is that there's a quantity called the absolute magnitude of a star this is how bright it actually is okay so if you remember back to the lesson we talked about a light bulb the light bulb has a certain brightness okay but it's got a different apparent magnitude apparent brightness okay according to how far away you stood from it so the further away you go the dimmer it looks but if you also know about how far away you are if you can tell any two of these things they will tell you the third one so if you know how bright something is and you know how bright it looks you can work out how far away it is okay so any two of those will give you the third one okay but you might be stopping and thinking but how how can we know two of those three things if it's a distant star we can't know how bright it really is we can't know how far away it is that's what we're trying to work out we can know how bright it looks but that's one out of three and one out of three is no good but it just so happens we've got a huge help in this and the huge help is things called variable stars okay and this particular kind of variable star called a cepheid variable okay and it turns out that cepheid variables are stars which are variable because they vary in brightness and not only do they vary in brightness but within that little circle what we find is we can spot enough stars to work out a pattern okay of how the period of the dimming and brightening of the star tells us its absolute magnitude its actual brightness okay so if we can plot a graph of stars inside that range okay then we can see stars which are too far away to measure but we can get how bright they actually are but what they did is they looked at it and they found some Cepheid variables within Andromeda and then they did the calculation and they looked at how bright they looked and they worked out how bright they actually were and they found that Andromeda is not inside our galaxy it's not like the stars that we looked at inside there it's actually much much further away okay and this was the first evidence that in fact the Milky Way wasn't the only galaxy not everything was inside one great lump of stars in the sky there were other galaxies as well so we could look at Cepheid variables and we could find different galaxies and that was brilliant and that gives us gives us a distance of out to about 30 megaparsecs so now we've got the Milky Way galaxy somewhere in the middle here and we can look at all these other galaxies and we can measure the distance to these galaxies quite a long way outside the Milky Way fantastic but we've still got 30 megaparsecs as a limit that's about a hundred million light years which is quite a long way but it's still only a tiny fraction of the universe so we're now two steps of our way towards our three-step ladder to do everything so this gets us to our third step our third step is type 1a supernova okay here's a little video of a type 1a supernova okay what we find is it's actually a binary star 
you've got one star that's turned into a red giant you've got one star that's finished and become a little white dwarf but the red giant starts to not pull its own atmosphere the atmosphere gets pulled off onto the white dwarf until it blows up in a type 1a supernova brilliant thing about type 1a supernovas we know exactly how bright they are okay there's enough of these type 1a supernovas acting uh, exploding within the distance of that second circle that we drew in the other galaxies around us for us to start to form a pattern that tells us how bright a type 1a supernova is if we know that then we can go up another level and the fantastic thing about type 1a supernovas is they're incredibly bright they have a brightness almost as large as a whole galaxy just for a few days okay and hence if they happen in very very distant parts of the universe we can still work out how far away they are because again we know their absolute magnitude that's their real brightness we know how bright they look from the earth and therefore once again we can work out the distance so type 1a supernovas are very popular with astronomers they give us a chance to measure the distance to even the furthest reaches of the universe.